I want to delve deeper into the world of the molecules, because that's where you do your work. Your speciality is protein assemblies. You look at the way DNA repairs itself, and this is all happening at the level of the cell, at the level of molecules and, of course, proteins. So you've buried yourself into what they call structural biology. I want to delve deeper into the world of the molecules, because that's where you do your work. Your speciality is protein assemblies. You look at the way DNA repairs itself, and this is all happening at the level of the cell, at the level of molecules and, of course, proteins. So you've buried yourself into what they call structural biology. It's a great honor for me to be here speaking at the Greenpeace Business Lecture. And it's also a wonderful opportunity for me to talk to you about the topic that, as Doug has just said, I consider to be the most significant issue facing us this century. What I'm going to do is run through the science behind climate change. And then I'll run through what the government is doing, and what the international position is, and the sorts of things that we all ought to be doing on this issue. So just starting off with the science. It's a great honor for me to be here speaking at the Greenpeace Business Lecture. And it's also a wonderful opportunity for me to talk to you about the topic that, as Doug has just said, I consider to be the most significant issue facing us this century. What I'm going to do is run through the science behind climate change. And then I'll run through what the government is doing, and what the international position is, and the sorts of things that we all ought to be doing on this issue. So just starting off with the science. And it's through ethnography to submerging yourself in an experience or in a situation as if you were one of the people inside of that situation. I think we can get a glimpse into these kinds of examples. We can understand different kinds of work. And they used to be a rich tradition of doing this kind of work like as such. And it's through ethnography to submerging yourself in an experience or in a situation as if you were one of the people inside of that situation. I think we can get a glimpse into these kinds of examples. We can understand different kinds of work. And they used to be a rich tradition of doing this kind of work like as such. On the other end of the phone is Jack Utzik. He's calling me from the Miami Federal Correctional Institute, a low security prison about 40 minutes drive from Miami Beach. Near the zoo and opposite one of Florida's famously generic aging street malls. Jack is serving an 18 year sentence for orchestrating a $280 million Ponzi scheme. For many years, before he was caught, this guy funded the Australian tours of some of the biggest music acts in the world. On the other end of the phone is Jack Utzik. He's calling me from the Miami Federal Correctional Institute, a low security prison about 40 minutes drive from Miami Beach. Near the zoo and opposite one of Florida's famously generic aging street malls. Jack is serving an 18 year sentence for orchestrating a $280 million Ponzi scheme. For many years, before he was caught, this guy funded the Australian tours of some of the biggest music acts in the world. Over half of patients had what we called a no symptoms, no asthma health belief. They thought about and managed their asthma as an acute episodic illness, 
the way someone would treat a cold or the flu, the felt when they had the wheezing or shortness of breath that's when they had their asthma, and it made perfect sense for them to use the quick relief medicines and their chronic control of medicines then but once they started feeling better they felt there was no reason for using those medicines because they felt okay. Over half of patients had what we called a no symptoms, no asthma health belief. They thought about and managed their asthma as an acute episodic illness, the way someone would treat a cold or the flu. The felt when they had the wheezing or shortness of breath that's when they had their asthma. And it made perfect sense for them to use the quick relief medicines and their chronic control of medicines then but once they started feeling better they felt there was no reason for using those medicines because they felt okay. On a tour of Spain in 1912, a fellow traveler introduced Holst to astrology, and he became so curious that sowed the seeds of his spectacular orchestral suite, the planets, his most popular if not most representative of creation, which portrays the astrological rather than the mythological characters of seven planets in our solar system. Jupiter the bringer of jollity has both of its jovial feet planted firmly on the ground. On a tour of Spain in 1912, a fellow traveler introduced Holst to astrology, and he became so curious that sowed the seeds of his spectacular orchestral suite. The planets, his most popular if not most representative of creation, which portrays the astrological rather than the mythological characters of seven planets in our solar system. Jupiter the bringer of jollity has both of its jovial feet planted firmly on the ground. It's the thing. You'd have to be a seismic instrument to actually feel these ones but they are there. They occur at all depths, some of them quite deep, some of them quite shallow. And I was actually in conversation with one of your colleagues from the geology department about them and, about the location of them and where these fault structures go. It's been fantastic. It's the thing. You'd have to be a seismic instrument to actually feel these ones but they are there. They occur at all depths, some of them quite deep, some of them quite shallow. And I was actually in conversation with one of your colleagues from the geology department about them and, about the location of them and where these fault structures go. It's been fantastic. We've all seen it in the movies. After doing long hard years in prison, a man finally walks free. He steps outside, the sun on his face, the wind in his hair, ready to start over. A new beginning? A new life? The reality of getting out of prison can be very different. If you don't have anyone to pick you up, you might get a transport voucher. If you don't have anywhere to go, you might be given $275, two nights in a motel and one set of clothes. That's it. There are more people in prison in Australia than ever before. Right now, that's more than 40, zero people. If you take the official figures, that's 40% more than six years ago. We've all seen it in the movies. After doing long hard years in prison, a man finally walks free. He steps outside, the sun on his face, the wind in his hair, ready to start over. A new beginning? A new life? 
The reality of getting out of prison can be very different. If you don't have anyone to pick you up, you might get a transport voucher. If you don't have anywhere to go, you might be given $275, two nights in a motel and one set of clothes. That's it. There are more people in prison in Australia than ever before. Right now, that's more than 40, zero people. If you take the official figures, that's 40% more than six years ago. Introduction to the history of psychology begins with a course, Why Study the History of Psychology? And I'd like to discuss several factors that are important to this. Because of course, as a formal discipline psychology came about in about 1879, and we, we tend to say with the founding of Wilhelm Wundt's laboratory in Leipzig, however, we need to also understand that the concerns of psychology were around will before this date, and therefore it helps to look at what historians have to say about how we go back in time and look at our past. So then when one begins to say why study the history of psychology, you can really hone in on four principles. Introduction to the history of psychology begins with a course, Why Study the History of Psychology? And I'd like to discuss several factors that are important to this. Because of course, as the formal discipline psychology came about in about 1879, and we, we tend to say with the founding of Wilhelm Wundt's laboratory in Leipzig, however, we need to also understand that the concerns of psychology were around will before this date, and therefore it helps to look at what historians have to say about how we go back in time and look at our past. So then when one begins to say why study the history of psychology, you can really hone in on four principles. A cloud of fine red dust swirls as a chopper lands next to a small racetrack in the outback center of Australia. There's a group of beer-soaked punters, mainly tourists, and a few locals crowding near the start line. They're wearing broad brim hats and boots, and they're leaning up against the guard rail, waiting. This is the scene for the final race of the 2019 Uluru Camel Cup. That's right. Humpbacked, slobbering, groaning camels. A cloud of fine red dust swirls as a chopper lands next to a small racetrack in the outback centre of Australia. There's a group of beer-soaked punters, mainly tourists, and a few locals crowding near the start line. They're wearing broad brim hats and boots, and they're leaning up against the guard rail, waiting. This is the scene for the final race of the 2019 Uluru Camel Cup. That's right. Humpbacked, slobbering, groaning camels. Our Earth-Moon system where we live is a very unusual arrangement even by the standards of our solar system, because we have this unusually large moon in proportion to the size of the Earth. And this has the moon's gravity has a very strong effect on the oceans of the Earth and generates the tides, as you say. But also, we have this unusual situation that our moon is big enough to completely cover the sun, when there's an eclipse over a large area. That's a remarkable coincidence, that our large moon should have the same size in the sky compared to the even larger sun, which of course is very far away. Our Earth-Moon system where we live is a very unusual arrangement even by the standards of our solar system, because we have this unusually large moon in proportion to the size of the Earth. And this has the moon's gravity has a very strong effect on the oceans of the Earth and generates the tides, as you say. But also, we have this unusual situation that our moon is big enough to completely cover the sun, when there's an eclipse over a large area. 
that's a remarkable coincidence, that our large moon should have the same size in the sky compared to the even larger sun, which of course is very far away. In fact, the audit of five ambulance stations in the Metro North region unveiled 306 tampered ampoules, 66 were in circulation. By our own calculations, that's about a quarter of the total narcotics supply in those five stations. A further 240 were found in a personal locker. That locker belonged to a paramedic from a station very close to Barbara's house. We'll call this paramedic Darren. When he was found out, Darren came clean and told officials he was suffering from a mental breakdown. Darren was sacked and immediately sectioned in a mental health facility. He later plead guilty of drug theft and contamination of goods. In fact, the audit of five ambulance stations in the Metro North region unveiled 306 tampered ampoules, 66 were in circulation. By our own calculations, that's about a quarter of the total narcotics supply in those five stations. A further 240 were found in a personal locker. That locker belonged to a paramedic from a station very close to Barbara's house. We'll call this paramedic Darren. When he was found out, Darren came clean and told officials he was suffering from a mental breakdown. Darren was sacked and immediately sectioned in a mental health facility. He later plead guilty of drug theft and contamination of goods. This is a story about how we're in the midst of a global extinction crisis. Dozens of species die out around the world each year. It statistically hasn't been this bad since the dinosaurs disappeared 65 million years ago. And it's about the sad reality that Australia is a world leader when it comes to pushing our native animals to extinction. This is exacerbated by a shrinking pool of money available to address it. So this story is about how, in this desperate scramble for that precious conservation dollar, sometimes scientific integrity gets lost. This is a story about how we're in the midst of a global extinction crisis. Dozens of species die out around the world each year. It statistically hasn't been this bad since the dinosaurs disappeared 65 million years ago. And it's about the sad reality that Australia is a world leader when it comes to pushing our native animals to extinction. This is exacerbated by a shrinking pool of money available to address it. So this story is about how, in this desperate scramble for that precious conservation dollar, sometimes scientific integrity gets lost. Without exposure to the alternative visions of the world expressed by other languages, our view of ourselves and of our planet remains inward-looking, unchallenged, and parochial. It is only by experiencing another language and culture whether at home or abroad that we discover the defining contours of our own. That is why it is important for the UN to affirm, and to keep on affirming, the principle of linguistic diversity as a basic human good. It fosters an intellectual and emotional climate in which triumphalist language attitudes and organizations feel increasingly uncomfortable and outmoded. Without exposure to the alternative visions of the world expressed by other languages, our view of ourselves and of our planet remains inward-looking, unchallenged, and parochial. It is only by experiencing another language and culture whether at home or abroad that we discover the defining contours of our own. That is why it is important for the UN to affirm, and to keep on affirming, the principle of linguistic diversity as a basic human good. It fosters an intellectual and emotional climate in which triumphalist language attitudes and organizations feel increasingly uncomfortable and outmoded.
they may be our cousins, but orangutans and other primates are nowhere near humans in terms of technological achievement, social organization, or culture. And it's humans' capacity for building off of one another, an integral part of our so-called cumulative culture, that has allowed us to build up so much in so little time. But how did we develop such advanced methods of learning in the first place? Kevin Lalland of the University of St. Andrews, spoke with me about his team's quest to pinpoint the social and cognitive processes that underlie humans' ability to acquire and transmit knowledge. They may be our cousins, but orangutans and other primates are nowhere near humans in terms of technological achievement, social organization, or culture. And it's humans' capacity for building off of one another, an integral part of our so-called cumulative culture, that has allowed us to build up so much in so little time. But how did we develop such advanced methods of learning in the first place? Kevin Lalland of the University of St. Andrews, spoke with me about his team's quest to pinpoint the social and cognitive processes that underlie humans' ability to acquire and transmit knowledge. Have you got kids? You know anyone who does? They're a lot of work, right? Many people would tell you, including me. It's a full-time job. Either you look after them or you pay someone else to. It's around the clock. Now if you live in Australia, you have kids and you don't have an income or you're on minimum wage, give or take a few hundred dollars a week, you're entitled to some money from Centrelink. It's called the parenting payment, and if you get it, you might have to sign up to something called Parents Next. Maybe you've heard of it. Have you got kids? You know anyone who does. They're a lot of work, right? Many people would tell you, including me. It's a full-time job. Either you look after them or you pay someone else to. It's around the clock. Now if you live in Australia, you have kids and you don't have an income or you're on minimum wage, give or take a few hundred dollars a week, you're entitled to some money from Centrelink. It's called the parenting payment. And if you get it, you might have to sign up to something called Parents Next. Maybe you've heard of it. My own neighborhood was a pretty good example of where the reporters of the area came from. I live next door to a cop. There was a fireman across the street. And the most important, the most awesome figure in the neighborhood worked at City Hall as a doorman. It was a working class middle class neighborhood and that's where the reporters came from. My own neighborhood was a pretty good example of where the reporters of the area came from. I live next door to a cop. There was a fireman across the street. And the most important, the most awesome figure in the neighborhood worked at City Hall as a doorman. It was a working class, middle class neighborhood and that's where the reporters came from. The whole idea of listening to departing employees is foolish. I've never understood why companies set such store by exit interviews. They tell themselves that ex-workers are somehow free to tell the truth, when they are actually just as constrained as current employees, only the constraints are different. When you are in a job, you don't say what you really think because you want to keep the paychecks coming in. 
but when you are walking out the door you also fail the truth test just as reliably. The whole idea of listening to departing employees is foolish. I've never understood why companies set such store by exit interviews. They tell themselves that ex-workers are somehow free to tell the truth, when they are actually just as constrained as current employees, only the constraints are different. When you are in a job, you don't say what you really think because you want to keep the paychecks coming in. But when you are walking out the door you also fail the truth test just as reliably. Since a far-right rally in St. Kilda in January this year, Senate Running's online presence has grown rapidly. Along with Pauline Hanson, he now has some of the highest online engagement stats of any Australian politician. On Facebook there's his personal page and his official party pages. Then, behind those there's this raft of other hardcore alt-right groups, like the Fraser Running Supporters Group. That have been using his face as a template for edgy and racist memes ever since he made it to Parliament. So if you go back to just before that egg struck, the back of Senator Anning's head, those were the people he was talking to. Since a far-right rally in St Kilda in January this year, Senator Anning's online presence has grown rapidly. Along with Pauline Hanson, he now has some of the highest online engagement stats of any Australian politician. On Facebook there's his personal page and his official party pages. Then, behind those there's this raft of other hardcore alt-right groups, like the Fraser Anning Supporters Group. That have been using his face as a template for edgy and racist memes ever since he made it to Parliament. So if you go back to just before that egg struck, the back of Senator Anning's head, those were the people he was talking to. You see, Pentecostalism is increasingly popular in Australia. Churches like Hillsong offer an enthusiastic style of worship and the promise of tangible blessings from God, health and wealth in particular. While the number of Australians attending Catholic and Anglican churches is dwindling, Pentecostalism is bucking the trend. The number of followers actually grew almost 20% in the decade to 2016. You see, Pentecostalism is increasingly popular in Australia. Churches like Hillsong offer an enthusiastic style of worship and the promise of tangible blessings from God, health and wealth in particular. While the number of Australians attending Catholic and Anglican churches is dwindling, Pentecostalism is bucking the trend. The number of followers actually grew almost 20% in the decade to 2016.